are, guys. The most exciting episode yet of the Christian Vasquez Show. That's me. You already know who I am. Thanks for tuning in to another one. And tonight, I have a special guest, somebody who I've known my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> somebody I've known since before I was born. That's right. I came out of his scrotum. My pops. What's up, pops? Welcome, up? welcome What's to the up, show, son? man. Thank you for having me. Oh man, I, we've been planning this for so long. Finally, we're here. I'm so excited to have you. So, so if you guys don't know my dad, um, actually, no, if you know my dad, you know my dad is full of life. He's got tons of energy. He's 70 years old. He's got more energy than me. Um, you know, he's the life of the party. So, if you know my dad, you know this episode is going to be exciting. So, dad, what's up, man? Everything is uh, super. Everything is super great, my man. Super great. And uh, and I want to thank you for inviting me over to fight night here at the gym, oh, uh, at your gym. Uh, we had a great time. You have a great. Uh, your members are all like family now. Yeah. And we act like family. Yep. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about being a loving human being. Yep. You embrace everybody. Yeah. And just enjoy life, and that's what life is all about. That's what it's about. Being good to your neighbors and your friends and uh, just enjoy life with the people that show you love too. That's it, man. You got to create that, that environment, you know, and you know, it's infectious and, and, and it grows and it grows and, you know, you got to keep it that way. Yeah. You know, you always got to keep it that way. You know, if any, any t negativity comes your way, you got to like this, woosa. that's it. <laughs> well, look, Pop, bring the mic a little closer to you. Just right. a little bit, a little bit. All right. All right, cool. So something's really exciting. Last year, I'm going to say probably a, a year ago, around this time, maybe earlier, I discovered Robinhood, the app. And, um, I, you know, I was new to crypto and all that. And Robinhood offered crypto and only like seven cryptos, Bitcoin and a few others. And then I was, I'm cheap, so I didn't want to spend so much money on Bitcoin. I'm like, oh, look at this guy, little Dogecoin, Dogecoin. And it was like less than a penny. I was like, I'm going to put some money on here. Who, you never know what's going to happen. It's so cheap. Why not? Right. Um, so, you know, I remember telling you about it, right? I'm, uh, I'm so happy that you told me about it. Yeah. And uh, um, you told me about it, and I jumped on it immediately. Mm -hmm. I didn't hesitate. I didn't know nothing about crypto. But I, you, you learn in life. About six years ago, I was at a dentist. He's talking over me as, he, as he's working on my mouth to his assistant. And he's telling her that he's buying Bitcoin. <laughs> and to me, that was all Chinese. I didn't understand a thing they were talking about. All I, all I said was, um, who regulates this? And uh, he didn't give me an answer. So I walked out of the dentist and uh, never looked into it. However, you learn from life. When my son said, Dave... Dad, there's a coin out there. And I looked at the price. Less than a penny. Less than a penny. <laughs> I loaded up. And the days hit 26 cents, 27 cents. Oh, my God. I'll pull it up right now. You know, with, the, with that type of stock, right, with that crypto on a Robinhood, a platform that's millions of people on, are on it, you can't go wrong putting a few hundred dollars, gambling money, you go to Atlantic City on it, because you know that eventually something that low is going to hit at least a penny, two pennies. So if you dump $500,000 on something that's below a penny, you're going to make money. You're going to make a fortune. You're going to make money. So look, proof is in the pudding. Now, I told everybody about it over a year ago, and a lot of people made money. Tonight, Dogecoin is at 27 cents. 27 cents. A week ago, it was at 5 cents. A week ago. Yeah. I made in one day, I don't like to tell everybody how much I made, but today, $19,000 in one day. Absolutely. Amazing. Beautiful. And, and uh, so I was excited. <laughs> you know, some people get excited because they found the gold mine and yeah. they keep it a secret. Yeah. I didn't keep it a secret. I was plastering that on Facebook. I, I had a couple of people, I had a couple of people uh, get in contact with me, but never bought. And... Uh, it breaks my heart because I, I posted on Facebook. I hope I never have to say, I told you so. Now, I told you so. I'll tell you. <laughs> so, uh, but the people that did listen to me are so happy. Yeah. Every, all of them. All of them are me happy too. today. Me too. Uh, oh, yeah. And I'm, good. and I'm glad to see them. I, I get a kick out of seeing them 
Yeah. So happy. They can't believe it. They can't believe it. I know. Because, uh, Cause no, cause, you know, all the articles, oh, it's a meme coin. Yeah. It's not real. It has unlimited uh, coins. There's no cap. You know what the great thing about that, and I think we discussed this, is that there's 8 billion people in the world. They're using Dogecoin as currency in basketball stadiums and you know different websites. I mean, ATM everywhere. ATM machines. ATM machines. Uh, it's it's going to be all over. People are going to buy things, and you're just going to use your crypto wallet and say, "How much is that?" Oh, spink. You know. Uh, and not not every coin is that smooth, and when it comes to purchasing things, uh, Mark Cuban. Yeah, he's he's a big advocate for Doge. His team. He he has sold. It's not a lot of money for Mark Cuban, but he has sold over 150,000 uh, uh, merchandise. Yeah. And that's only the dro- a drop in the box. Oh, so he's just get, but he's just getting started. Yeah, this he's is, just getting started, yeah. This is infancy stages. Yeah, this is, so we're talking about a couple of weeks ago he, <laughs> he decided to uh, do uh, that. And then you got Elon Musk, who's going to send a coin to the moon, and um, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Uh, but there's so many other places that are going to be accepting this coin. And and the, and this is a, a a a fact that I want you to try to understand. Like electric cars, they're two percent. They're two percent of all the cars that are sold in America. Mm-hmm. So any any inv- and I'm not going to get away from Deutsche Coin. No. Any investment in batteries, any investment in uh, the technologies that go into electric cars. It's in infancy. Mm-hmm. It's gonna blow up, right? Because as the percentage goes from two to ten to twenty to a hundred percent, whoever got in early is gonna make a lot of money. Going back to Doge, eight percent of the American public buy crypto coins, and 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 there's a couple of good coins out there, but Absolutely. we're not gonna talk about them today because today is Doge coin. Um, right. When the public catches on. Listen to what the bank is doing, the central bank, printing trillions of dollars now. Trillions of dollars. It took from 1776 to 1980, which is about 204 years. It took this nation to get into debt less than a trillion dollars. In the last 35, 40 years, we're in debt today, $28 trillion. The dollar doesn't buy what it used to buy. No. Cryptocurrency, we're not going to be using these fake dollars one day. I think the future is going to be cryptocurrency. Absolutely. And as the American public, from 8% goes to 50%, everybody that's in it now, Mm -hmm. I think they'll be owning their own island. That's right. That's the way I see it. Absolutely. And, you know, we're talking about how they're printing trillions of dollars, right? (laughs) Like pay monopoly money, and what I see happening is this: they're gonna crash the economy, so that food prices are gonna be astronomical. To eat healthy in America or even in the world is gonna be almost impossible. To get gasoline for your house, your car, or you know, astronomical. Hopefully, hopefully you got a. Uh, electric car. Electric car. But I'm just saying, they, they, they just printed so much money and the inflation on everything is going to be ridiculous. We all have experienced that. I remember when I first got married a long time ago. <laughs> a long how, time long, ago. how long, Dad? How long have you been married? I've been married over 50 years. 50 years. But when I first got married, with $25, $30, I'll fill up my shopping cart. Serious. And I had to buy baby food, diapers. I, I had to buy a lot of baby stuff first. And then I would buy my pork chops and my steak and my rice and beans and all that. You know, I like rice and beans, mm-hmm. my spaghetti. But I would come home with a lot of bags of food. What do you buy today with $25? Nothing. Breakfast. Yeah, some bananas, cereal, milk, almond milk, a couple of things. And this is what's happening to the world. Now, I'm so happy that my son introduced me to this particular coin because... Um, you have to learn in life that just because you don't understand something, you don't look into it. Man, a lot of people just, oh. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, Benny, oh, yeah. Benny was telling me that uh, he told his neighbor to right. buy some Deutsche coin. Right. 
His neighbor said, uh, all right, uh, I'm going to call my son. His son, I don't know, I think is an accountant or whatever. Okay. He said, Dad, don't buy that. Uh-huh. That's like a penny stock. Right. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. The man didn't buy. Missed out. He missed out. Missed out. He, and he's going to miss out. Now, like any investment that you make, uh, there's a good possibility that you, you get in at 26 cents and it drops back down to 10 cents. But you're not getting in at 26 cents, uh, not knowing that it could drop back that time. You're getting in at 26 cents because you might think that it's going to go over a dollar, mm-hmm. hopefully within a year. Yeah. Within a year. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Yesterday was Wednesday, and Coinbase started to trade in, in the markets. Made uh, its debut. That's right. Made its debut on the market. That's right. And uh, Dogecoin, it's not in the Coinbase platform. However, it will be. We think it's going to be. Uh, and the beautiful thing about that is that all of a sudden, you're going to have over 30 million people having access to the Dogecoin. Doge is as popular as Bitcoin and the other coins. Um, um, so if these other 30, 000, oh, 30 million people start to buy it. And this- that will happen because once they say, oh, Doge is going to be offered on Coinbase, the hype is going to be behind it before it gets dropped. Yeah. It gets dropped. Everybody and their mother's going to say, you know what? We might as well buy it. Yeah. 30 million people dropping a couple buckets uh, of bucks on this. And everybody who got in under a penny is going to look at their freaking stock and be like, holy shit. It's, look at this. I knew it. it. It's it's hard. It's hard to look at your account and know that you made $10,000 in one day. Dad. So, so nineteen thousand dollars in one day. Yeah. That's and, crazy. I know, you know, I I yeah. never seen that many. And, and even if, even if I even if you buy at thirty cents, if it hits a dollar, you're gonna say, "Damn, I bought this at thirty cents." If it if it ever hits at two two dollars, and there's no reason why it can't. What were we saying before? A thousand dollars a day. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars a penny. A thousand. Every time it goes up a penny, a thousand dollars. Penny, you, thousand penny. You thousand. got people that are making ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for every penny that it goes up. So this is why you're going to see fluctuations. But 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 at, even at thirty cents, if somebody told you invest thirty cents, and there's a possibility that within twelve months you have a dollar fifty. To know that you made a dollar twenty on your thirty cents investment, that's super, man. Mm-hmm. That's super. Now, now let me just say this: don't put your mortgage money on it. No, but you don't do that with anything. You don't. I um I throw beer money at it. I was lucky to throw beer money at it when it was very inexpensive, but I still continue because there's a certain amount of coins that I would like to have, so that um, if the coin reaches a certain number that I have in my mind. Uh, I'll make my second million dollars uh, in life. Yeah. So that's what we're going for. And let me, look, I just touch back on what I was saying before about the unlimited amount of coins. Yeah. All right. The reason why I feel like that's a good thing, real quick, you know, because there's crypto pros out there. They're like, oh, there's an unlimited surplus of coins. This it can't it can't go this high. It can't reach ten dollars or twenty. Why not? What if everybody buys this every day? What if eight million, eight billion people around the world just start buying it because it's unlimited surplus? This will become the new dollar. You'll be able to use it everywhere. So there's no reason why, because it's unlimited cap, that this isn't a, a worthwhile coin. Okay, that is my perception on it. You know, it's everybody needs to have Doge if it's going to be the currency around the yeah. world, right? It's, so if there's an unlimited, if there's a cap on it, not everybody's going to have it. That's true. Uh, that's that's why Bitcoin, my Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a has a cap, has a cap, and it's not easy to use to spend. You got to do this it's and not, that. It's not and, and, tangible. And the average man can't spend. Could you imagine, on July, of, twenty ten, uh, you could have bought, uh, Bitcoin for, one tenth of a penny. That one tenth of a of a penny investment 
today's worth sixty thousand dollars. You got millionaires up there, up the yin yang, because yeah. they bought crypto, but they have a limited supply. If if and and we only got eight percent of the American people investing in crypto, eight percent. If and that, growing and growing. If that if that if let's say another eight percent is is added to the the lot. Maybe maybe Deutsch goes up to sixty cents. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, it could go up to sixty cents without anybody else coming in. But more and more people are realizing that there's 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 a way to make money up there out there in cryptocurrency. So can I can I give a, a little shout out to my do you ex, ex ex JWs? Yeah, go ahead. Give a shout out to your ex JWs. To all my uh, ex JWs, I I'm a little disappointed because. I actually made a video specifically on Deutschcoin. You did. When it was around four and a half, five cents. <laughs> but because unforeseen circumstances and because I uh, had traveled to Puerto Rico, uh, uh, when I came back, um, uh, there were situations in which the... Uh, video didn't come out. Yeah, the right? video didn't come out. My fault. My editor wasn't around. He had a, a movie set to go to, so we couldn't get it up, but... And and I was just going to tell you know you guys who have enjoyed my my little conversations that uh, it's never too late. No, even at thirty cents, this is the way you got to look at it. You got to think about that this coin has the same uh, capabilities as all these other coins that have gone to fifty cents, have gone to a dollar fifty, thousand dollars, thousand twenty dollars. There, there's about two thousand coins out there. But Deutschcoin has become one of the most popular coins on this planet. Yeah. In fact, on Twitter, it was the number one topic. Man, it, uh, multiple times. Yeah. Do Doge has been the number one topic on Twitter, I'm going to say, at least 20 times in the past year. It's, it's, it's always always trending. Yeah. Many platforms. It's, it's trending on TikTok. It's trending on Snapchat. It's trending on Instagram. Everywhere you go, it's a big deal. And that says a lot. And it says a lot, too, that all these uh, business owners around the world, big business owners, like we said before, Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, all these. And there's so many more. I, I can't yeah. name them. But they're all behind it. It's a big deal. 27 cents, 30 cents right now was still low. This is still a baby. I don't care what nobody says. Get in now because it's going to be 2 3 4 $5. Dump your, your gambling money on it. Dump your, uh, your weekend drinking money on it. Get involved. That's it. Beer money. Listen, I remember when Amazon went into bankruptcy and came out of bankruptcy. People could buy Amazon at one time for pennies. Same thing with Apple. And, you know, there were people out there saying, man, I just bought Apple at 10 cents a share. <laughs> Today, you know what they are. Mm -hmm. Today, they are part of that 10%. That's right. Part of that 10%. And, um, and we... My son and I want to share this with you That's because it. I believe that it's going to go over a dollar. You know, if you could make a 300 percent on a 25 percent on a 25 cent investment. Hey, that's beautiful. So that outside of Dodge, there's a lot going on in the world. Yep. Um, actually, let's let's uh, Saturday this past Saturday. We had a fight party here at Strong Island Boxing. The family was here in all support of. First and foremost, our fighter here, Jess, who became the number four ranked women's elite boxer in America in her weight class, 132, which is an Olympic weight class. So we celebrated her victories over there. She made it to the semifinals. She fought a beautiful, beautiful tournament. And we're back to the drawing board working and making sure that she develops physical strength, yeah. those attributes so that when she hits these girls, they feel that power yeah. and she can be more dominant. Um, but we were also here for... The hometown champ, Mastic Shirley's own uh, Joe Smith Jr. Excellent. He was fighting for the WBO light heavyweight championship of the world. This is huge. Yeah. This is huge. So Actually, and and he won. He won. He brought the title home, and, and we had a great night. We had a great night. We were all excited, and he should have won by TKO. Yeah. Because he hit that dude hard. He went down, and the ref 
stop the fight mm-hmm. and give him a time to re- recuperate. To recuperate. And the, one of the promoters was going crazy. Yeah, outside. Joe DeGuardia, star yeah, boxing. Yeah. He was going crazy. That's Joe's promoter. Because, but anyway, uh, Joe Smith won. Well, well, well he, 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 if he didn't give that guy that break. Knockout. He would have got up and Joe would have finished him like of he course. does everybody else. The guy was asleep already. <laughs> yeah. So they gave him a break. So congratulations, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Uh, we had a party. And you uh, got a lot of guts and you... You take a good punch. God bless. Yeah, and uh, he's now he's uh so now they want to unify the titles. So there's a guy I believe from Russia. I'm not positive exactly where, but over in that area of the world, his name is Better Beef. Better Beef has the WBC and I think the WBA yeah. title. So now him and Joe are gonna fight to become the unified world champion of right. the world. Right. That's crazy. It is. And no, uh, no. Joe's from our neighborhood, and I think he's gonna do it personally. I know he's going to do it. So we're going to have a unified world champion, man. That'd be great. From our neighborhood. Well, we'll have another party here. Hell yeah, we're going to party for and, him. And uh, uh, we have a good family here. Uh, yeah. We do. We, we, uh, we party till like 2 in the morning, man. My dad was over here. <laughs> come on. All right, I'll stop that. Oh, <laughs> we had a good time. I, we had a good I, time. I, I, uh, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm, I find myself to be a very serious person. I got personal relationships with the most important person in the universe. But I'm a happy person. Hell yeah, so, that, so when I'm partying, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna be smiling. Enjoy life, man. Gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna sit in the corner like. Nah, that. God put us here to enjoy, love, love and, and smile, yeah, and make other to. people, you know, express that energy. Hell that yeah. it's all good. I think I think everybody in this gym likes me. Yeah, man. Because I'm nice to everybody, and and I'm a comedian too. Well, I, I have a lot of uh, talents. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Tell me, pop. Uh, who's your favorite boxer of all time? Yeah, Macho Camacho. Oh, okay. So he's he's from the he's from the homeland. Yeah. So so Puerto yeah, Rican. Macho was great. Um, Macho was great. Not only was he great, he was an innovator. He was charismatic. You know, Muhammad Ali was charismatic. There's a few others, but Macho time, man. Let me tell you, not like Macho time. And a lot of these guys that are here today. Like Floyd Mayweather, he even says, I give I give props to Macho for a lot of his flamboyancy. He got that from him, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. The way they dress, the way they carry the they get carried to the ring now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Macho did that first. So yeah. I, I my my favorite boxer uh, goes back a long time. But um uh, and there was a time I hated Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Could you imagine that? Yeah. And when he lost, it broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah, when he lost to Joe Fraser. Oh, yeah, you heard. I couldn't believe it. I said, man. But I loved him at the same time. Right. Because Muhammad Ali, good looking. He was a loving guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Muhammad Ali didn't have a racist bone in his body. Mm -mm. He loved white folks and black folks just the same. He was a religious man. And uh, if he was around today, he would have a lot to say. I know he would. uh, uh, Malcolm X. If Malcolm X was today, oh, he have a lot uh, to say too. Oh, uh, he would. They, they would shoot him again. Yeah, they would shoot Malcolm X. Malcolm X told the truth mm-hmm. all the time. He was on point. Uh, he, you know, he called uh, one of the political parties. Uh, in fact, he used to say this: that he liked the Republican Party better mm-hmm. because he felt that they were upfront with him and let him know exactly how they felt. Right. But he hated the Democratic Party. Yeah. He says because they come for the votes. And then they leave, do nothing for us. Yep. And he said that loud and clear many times. Right. But they were afraid of him. He was powerful. The, yes. oh, he was powerful. He, he, he could move a crowd. And that's what they were afraid of. When he went to Mecca and came back from Mecca, he found himself, not, he found himself worshiping Allah, not with just black people. He found himself worshiping Allah with everybody, Arabs, mm-hmm. whites, and he realized that uh, worshiping God is not a black thing or a white thing. It's a universal thing. Yeah, it's a so, human thing. It's exactly. So when he came back, one of the last things I heard him speak, of, and I, believe me, I was in the that was in the sixties. I was a young man, but I remember him saying, "It's not. It's not a black struggle." It's a human struggle. Yeah. And the system said, shut them down. Yeah. Because when, you're, when you have the ability to speak and charismatic like he was, right. he will unite blacks and white like no one can. Yep. Uh, 
much like King. Yep. Much like King. Thing. But but uh, and, uh but he was to me he was like dynamic. I yeah. loved him. The sharpest. He was great. Not Al Sharpton. No, the sharpest. Not Al Sh- uh, Absolutely Sh- Al Sharpton. That's a clown. What? That's a clown. Uh, nobody respects that guy. He's a clown. Uh, Sorry, I don't care. I was hoping they bitch slap him when he went to Puerto Rico <laughs> to protest over there the, uh, because they were bombing the islands and all that stuff. Right. But uh, I don't want him. We don't We don't need Al Sharpton. He's a fake. Yeah. He's a fake. He's a. He's paid. He's paid off. But, um... What else, Pop? Man, we, you know, Dodge Coins popping. We had the fight Saturday. Well, um, there's a lot going on. We got, oh, wait, Cor- a Corona. Co- COVID. <laughs> oh, COVID. How, how could somebody forget COVID? I know. <laughs> I forgot about it after a week. It, they announced it yeah. uh, about a year ago. I said, oh, my God. Yeah, but from the beginning, you were yeah. like, ah, so, bullshit alert. Yeah, bullshit. Hell yeah. My alarm system at home. Bullshit alert. Bullshit. Let me tell you a little story about. Tell him, David. About five years ago, I'm hearing that there's a pandemic in Puerto Rico. Zika. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Uh, we had just gone through, uh, 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 you know, uh, a weather situation out there. So we don't need this. We need the economy of Puerto Rico to. Uh, the built-up tourism, a very big industry in the island. So um, I get on the phone. I call about six people who lived in six different parts of the island. Hey, do you know anybody with Zika? (laughs) No. They'll tell me no. We hear about it, but I don't see nobody with Zika. There was a young man that worked at the hospital in Mayagüez. Um... For some reason, I forgot his name. And uh, I asked him, is there a, a crisis in Puerto Rico with Zika? He says, Dave, the only people here uh, that have Zika is people that have it up here. They have Zika in their mind. Mm-hmm. They're not sick. They're nobody. There's nobody here with Zika. Right. So I called Channel 12. I said, why do you keep on making these announcements over the news that there's a pandemic in Puerto Rico called Zika. You're, you're destroying the, uh, the, uh, the, economy. the economy. And he says, well, that's what we get from the federal government. I said, so, so I said, listen, I've been calling people in Puerto Rico. No one over there knows anything about Zika. Now, the last person I spoke to was Lucy, a lady named Lucy. Uh, she's bilingual. Um, and she says to me, David, this Zika thing is a political thing. Yeah. And I said, really? You feel this political thing? I s- she says, yes, it is. So. Confirmed. About 30 days after me and her had that little conversation, uh, the Obama administration has put aside $1.5 billion for Zika. Mm-hmm. So they gave it to the pharmaceuticals. Once the pharmaceuticals got the $1.5 billion, Within another 30 days after that, wow. Zika was Zika, gone. Zika, yeah. Oh, magically. Eradicated. Magically. Magically, yeah. That's all you have to like, do. You give money to the pharmaceuticals, things disappear. Things disappear. Just like this. The vaccines are coming and everything will be fine because they got their money. The pharmaceuticals oh, got yeah. paid and everybody injected themselves with this unknown substance that Hell yeah. is an emergency protocol, not even approved. Yeah. But anyway. It's not even approved. And um, well, well, let me tell you something. Political warfare. Um, have you ever spoken to someone with uh, bad breath? Now, do you think they have bad breath because the the mouth is sanitized? Or do you think he has bad breath because maybe he has a, a piece of steak from four days before? That's why he has bad breath. He has something in his mouth that, uh, foods caught somewhere, mm-hmm. uh, uh, infected gums with germs growing in it. Now, could you imagine all these people wearing masks? Now, even if you don't have bad breath, you have germs in your mouth. And, and you have this mask in your face all day. Some people do. I think some people go to take a shower with it. So, <laughs> so you have this mask, and you're breathing these germs into the mask. So it's going from your mouth to the mask into your nose. It's, it's, it's absurd. And but people buy everything. Uh, 
which, 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 which could lead to many different subjects. Like, for instance, could you imagine, you know, Joseph Goebbels, uh, uh, Minister of Propaganda in Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. with Adolf Hitler. Right. And they're sitting down. And they say, hey, how are we going to uh, take total control? And uh, one of them came up with it. You tell a big lie, you, but it got to be a big lie. It's got to be a big lie. Mm -hmm. And then you repeat it every day in the radio, in the newspapers. Every day in the radio, in the newspapers. The next thing you know, they're killing Jews. Yeah. They're killing anybody that doesn't go, Heil Hitler. Right. And, and, it's, and it's because people, for some reason or another, it, when they hear things, they, they don't question. It. Right. You got to question things in life. Everything. Question everything. Hell yeah. Everything, especially if it's on the television. Question it. There's a reason why they're telling you this. Tell a vision. Yeah, wake up. TV stands for television. They keep on putting these visions in your mind. Uh, you know what? Oh, we, can get, we can get deep into this subject. Oh, this, this one is a... Uh, el grandoso. Yeah. El, this is a big subject. Our, our, our uh, hum humanity is... How do you say it? Constructed or formed around the television. The television has influenced humanity to where we are today. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Imagine we all lived in the woods with no television. Do you think any of this would be happening? Oh. Absolutely not. But because there's a television and they're able to program the minds, people get influenced and they think that they are these things or they're going to get that thing or they're going to become this. Or I want to be that because that looks like that, and I want to. That looks good to me. It's all a program. You guys got to understand that and research it. Research psyop, p s y o p, psyop operations. You guys will understand more about this. Stop watching TV and ingesting it and believing it. Do your own research. Be open minded, right? Man, I, I mean, we talk. Me and my dad. Me and my dad are hip. Listen, he's been hip though for years, and I'm glad I grew up with a dad like him because. If I didn't, I'd be a dumbass and I'd be stuck. Oh, man, give me that vaccine. And then all of a sudden, a week later, you see on the news, they're recalling it. And all you guys are home right now scared because you, you put that poison in you. Yeah, absolutely. But we knew about it years ago. Uh, I, I'm 70. I've never had the flu. And there's a possibility that maybe. You got flu last year. No, 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 no. I've never had the flu. Uh, the, the reason why I know I I, don't, I never had no 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 I'm saying maybe what were you gonna say go ahead my bad what, what I was gonna say was that uh, that maybe I've maybe I might have had one vaccine okay in the last fifty five years I think that was uh, if you call a tetanus shot a, a vaccine yeah I I know I had a tetanus shot and there's no reason to take that I mean I'm not walking barefoot I'm not gonna step on no nails and stuff like that right. but just, they'll push it on you and say hey when was the last time you had a tetanus shot yeah well you should have one. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, Chris, <laughs> you you should take some statin drugs. Why, Dad? Why? Because you... No, not the doctor's telling no, you this. I, I know, I know, I know. Why? Because it will prevent heart disease. That is that that is the biggest bull. Yeah. Uh, you know something? You eat cereal in the morning. You eat oatmeal in the morning. You're putting carbs into your system. Turns into sugar. You'll have more triglycerides. Your triglycerides will be higher than if you ate a, a bar of butter. The people don't know this. That's why I eat my butter every day. Butter and eggs and bacon. Yeah. Butter, eggs, and bacon. And that's another thing, Dad. They don't talk about zilch, about nutrition, ever. You know, they don't say, hey, by the way, on the news, by the way, humans, if you want to prevent yourself from getting sick, Boost your immune system by taking vitamin D, vitamin C. Wake up in the morning. Go exercise. Go outside. Get some sunlight. Think positive. Absolutely. None of that. You don't hear none of that. Oh, you hear on TVs. Oh, my God. There's another race war in the uh, middle of America. People yeah. are rioting. The, oh, this disease, that disease. The news is negative. Absolutely. They're poisoning you. You know. I'm sorry. I get passionate so about this. I do, too. Um. I don't know. I wish I wasn't passionate. But you said something about race war. Let me say something. Oh, I want to say this. Um, one of my best friends in life was uh, a female Puerto Rican 
African descendant, and she would visit me and her daughter. Uh, my house was always open to older folks as well as young folks. Many of my young friends and, and my old friends, many have been to my house. We'd party hardy. Uh, you know, not party hardy. I mean. Yeah, party hardy. It's all right, man. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome to my house. She was, she, was, um, she was a black person. She was a black Puerto Rican. And she was a beautiful person. And I, I, she would come to my house, and I would greet her uh, with love. Then there was a, we used to call her Kaya, okay? Uh, as a kid, the first black uh, sports figure that I started to like was uh, Hector Lopez. And I saw him at, I can't believe it. He must be 150 years old. I was a kid back in the 1950s. And, uh, He's not still alive, is he? Not only is, is he still alive, this man is looks healthy. Really? Hector Lopez. I'm going to look him up. But there was also uh, uh, Elson Howard. Um, in this country, when you look at a sporting event, I would have to say that maybe 70 80% of the people in the arena are white. Today, and it's been for some time now, you would think that the NBA is a black league. You would look at the National Football League and you would think it's a black league. You look at baseball uh, and you have a lot of uh, uh, blacks or African descendants. The word black is kind of silly, you know. Um, and, and the people in the stands love their ball players. So when I hear that there's a systematic racism in America, uh, I can, it, it, it's, it's, it's a TV subject. It's a TV subject. I want you to think about this. Do you wake up in the morning hating black people? Do you wake up in the morning hating brown people? Now, the, the, the new thing, what is it? Chinese or Oriental? Oh, my God. There's an Asian uh, racism going on right now. Uh, why? I don't know. I mean, CNN said so. <laughs> CNN said so. They said C that there's, yeah. there's something going on. Yeah. It's, Something's going on. <laughs> news. This might be news. What's up? 35 no. Are, are you serious? Deutsche coin is going to the moon tonight. It hit 35 cents a coin. And I don't, I don't want to say this. I, 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 listen, it breaks my heart to say I told you so. Ryan, how much did you get in at? What did you buy in at, Ryan? First time with a penny. -hoo -hoo -hoo. He bought out a penny. Oh man, you got in early. That's that's beautiful. That's great. I got in below a penny a year ago, and I was telling everybody about it. I think I even told you about it, right? Right? Yeah, but uh, uh, at, yeah, at the time. It, 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 back to twenty nine. It's fluctuating. It's fluctuating. Uh, what's happening? Uh, we're doing a we're doing a podcast, Ryan. So I'm I'm gonna let you go soon. No, 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 but it's okay. Hey, so it, it, tell him. Hit 35 and it's back down to what? Right now it's at 29. It was 35 cents like two minutes ago. That, that's beautiful. It doesn't matter. It, you could expect this. So so I'm going to let you go, Ryan. Okay. So um, back to Deutsche Coin. Yeah. People are excited about the gains. Yeah, you buy something at one cent. And you put thousands on it, or even a couple of hundred. You saw, you saw a huge, uh, huge upside today. That's a tremendous. And, uh, you know, we're celebrating this Deutsche Coin event like if it was, uh, uh, you know, a Super, holiday. Super Bowl. <laughs> the Super Bowl, yeah. I, I didn't want to say whatever, but, uh, like, yeah. the Super Bowl. Because uh, it ain't stopping there. And you know what I love about it is that there was a lot, there's so many crypto pros out there that were like oh stay away don't do that and i'm like why why not it's it's offered on a platform why not oh because 
It only it it's only has a certain amount of value, and then they're going trying to get all this, you know, get detailed and specifics yeah. and data. I'm like, listen, I want to hear all the data. Yeah, I know that people are going to put money in it, and it's going to grow, and that's all that matters. Eight percent, once again, eight percent of the American public is investing in crypto. So, if you're one of that eight percent, and all of a sudden it grows to sixteen percent. 24%, uh, and to the moon, whoever buys now is going to make money. Yep, absolutely. That's so listen, the same way I felt about Doge a year ago, I feel about a new crypto that's rather unknown. It's not on Robinhood. It's very difficult to buy because if you don't know how to buy crypto through exchanges and, and, and having a wallet, you're not going to really get how to buy it. That's why I love it. Because it's under a penny. So if you put $500 on it today, you'll have over 2 million coins. Okay? The moment this coin, and I'll tell you the name of it, is called Hoge. H-O-G-E. The moment Hoge is put on an exchange like Coinbase or Robinhood, this will absolutely have the same effect that Doge is. So I'm telling you all right now, remember this day. Remember this day I told you. I don't know what today is, but let me say it so we all can remember. 14th, 15th, what is today it? Today is the 15th. April okay. 15th, 2021. Hoge will be the next Doge. Get in now. If you want to find out how to do it, I'll put the link in the description below. It's hoge.finance. That's the website. It breaks it down on how to purchase it. You got to be a little computer savvy. If you don't, If you're not computer savvy, get somebody to teach you because I want you guys to put your next paycheck on this and forget about it. In a year's time, you come back, I promise you, you're going to make 10 times the amount. Maybe, and, and you know what? Maybe it'll take a year or two, but within the next two years, Hoge is the future. Another Doge. I, I, um, so, I, so I'm going to tell him my sad story. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you a sad story about Hoge. Wait, by the way, I have, I have currently 6 million coins in Hoge. And I didn't spend that much money to have it. And I'm never going to look at it again. So if it reaches a dollar, how much does Christian have? Six million dollars. Off of one dollar. That's right. So my son tells me about Hoge. For I invested 600 bucks. Now, uh, unfortunately, some of these exchanges charge you a fee. So I wound up paying like $75 for one fee. So now, by the time the money got to, uh, um, the money was, uh, where did the money go to, Coinbase? So you started with the exchange on Coinbase. Yeah, that's exactly. Where, that's where you invest right, the money, right, because I deposited into Coinbase. So now I have to buy um, the... Uh, in, in order to buy... Hoge. Hoge, you have to have Ethereum. Ethereum, exactly. And you buy Ethereum on Coinbase. Exactly. Right. So now, um, I'm able now to buy Hoge. And by the time they took out all the fees, I had like maybe $450 invested in, in Hoge. But it, um, hey, I had 1,600,000 coins. Listen, in 2010, $450 would also buy you over a million Bitcoins. So what happens is that I'm looking at my account and I, I can never see the I can never see the the one million six hundred thousand coins. That 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 bothered me. Now my son will look at his account and he will see he will see the coins. So he was in the uh, Louisiana? Was I was in Louisiana, yeah, for the USA National Boxing in, Championships. He was in Louisiana, and now I'm trying to figure out how to how can I see my coins as soon as I go into MetaMask. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went on YouTube, and I'm not stupid, man, but I didn't understand the guy 100%. <laughs> so I wound up giving somebody... <laughs> on this planet, 1,600,000 coins. 
Doge coins. And someday that guy's gonna be have a lot of money just off of him making a mistake. But I believe that that uh, guy that he watched the video on no, YouTube, no, no. he doesn't think so. But look, the no. guy told him put this address in, and it'll go into your wallet. What happened no. was he put that guy's address in and went no, to his I wallet. <laughs> no, it didn't. I, actually, I didn't hear the guy that well. He said, if you don't see your address, right? Because when I went back and I started to review his instructions, uh -huh. I even got in contact with him, and uh, the, uh, you know he uh, he, he kind of felt bad. Oh, oh, he hit you back? Yeah, he hit me back. Uh, what happened was he said that to have the one million six hundred thousand coins visible immediately when you go into MetaMax, uh, you have to try first go to CoinGecko, mm -hmm. and if you see your account there, you click on it. Right. And then you click on MetaMask. Okay. But somewhere along the line, I didn't hear him say, if you don't see your account there, yeah. go to Ethereum. Right. Because that's, that's I, I bought the coins through Ethereum. Yeah. I, I, so they would have had my account in, in Ethereum. Right. And, uh, and the thing is that uh, you have to be a little careful with this uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, that's why Robinhood is very simple. Right, but, but it's okay to use MetaMask and these yes, things. I, I know you hear. A you lot know, of people read, do. A lot of people millions do. of people are using MetaMask right I now know. as a wallet. I know. And they, they get Ethereum there. They hold their Ethereum there. Yeah. It's fine. It's safe. I, I, as I long know. as you don't give your code and nobody sees your code it, to get in, you're good. Exactly. And 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 the uh, to get into MetaMask, they'll give you like maybe 12 words. And those 12 words... You, you write right. them down. You put them in a safe place. Hide them. And so to get into MetaMax, you have to put those 12 words in the same order that they first showed you. The first time they showed you the order of those words, you have to put them in the same order. Now, to get back into uh, um, MetaMax, you have to put these words back in the same order. If you miss one, you can't get in. So and it's, and it's very difficult for somebody to, to know. guess, to guess thirty words. Yeah, you know, it, how many is it, about twelve. Or how many? It's like it's like fifteen something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. But anyway, I gave somebody one. You know why it doesn't bother me? Oh, let me tell you something. Because he made thirty thousand dollars on Doge. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> let me tell you what bothers me. What it doesn't bother me because I only spent from 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 A to Z. I spent six hundred bucks, so I I, I lost uh, most of it. I think I got 1.6 coins in uh, MetaMax. I don't know how that happened. Just one coin. That's crazy. So, but I don't care because I, I I lost 600 bucks. Listen. Uh, it is what it is. It man. is. 600 bucks is, to so, me, it's, it's not like oh, nothing. So He's rich. Yeah, that's what he's trying to say. He's rich. So, I'm not rich. I'm just kidding. But I, I 600 bucks, it's nothing. So, so now... I said to myself, I'm going to invest the same 600 bucks on Hoge coin. Doge coin. Doge? Hoge. Oh, uh, Hoge. The same I, 600. Uh, another 600. Okay, you're going to put another 600, you said. Yeah, on Hoge. Mm -hmm. And, um, but because over the last four or five days, the cryptocurrencies have shot up, I'm waiting for a pullback because I, I would have to buy Ethereum first. And I would like to buy Ethereum on the pullback. And then, uh, you know, and then by the, and chances are Hoge will probably come down too as the cryptocurrencies come down. I, I would like to buy a Hoge coin at 0. 0.000. I would love to get it like 0. 0. 0.0001. What is it now? Well, right now it's at 0. 0.00. Zero two nine five one. Two nine five one. So just to break that down for you, I'll go to the converter for you all. If you buy, if you put say a hundred dollars, you'll get three hundred and thirty-eight thousand nine hundred and five coins. A hundred dollars, you'll get three hundred and thirty-eight thousand coins. Now look, if you guys got, if you, if you make good money and, and you're saying, look, I could throw away five hundred bucks, this is how much you'll make for five hundred bucks on this coin, and you can never look at it again. You never have to watch it again. And all of a sudden, one day you're gonna click on it a year from now. You're gonna be like, what the hell? Five hundred dollars will get you 1.694 million coins. 500 bucks. That's right. Imagine the day that goes to 30 cents like Doge. Come on. Now, uh, 
uh, when, my fr- my, when my brother-in-law, Benny, told his neighbor to buy Doge. Uh, Doge, Doge. Doge, thank you, thank you. So you say, uh, that, that, some people like to say. Uh, do, do, they like to add an I before the they, G? Or the, no, they like, no, <laughs> Doge. But they, they call it Dodge also. Dodge coin. Yeah, yeah Dodge coin. I used to call it Dodge. Me but too. Then, then you get somebody, hang on with the Deutsch. So, Deutsch. anyway, uh, my, uh, my brother-in-law's uh, neighbor. Uh, neighbor called his son. His son is a, I don't know, I think his son is a, an accountant or maybe, I don't know, an engineer. He said, Dad, Dad, that's like a penny stock, man. Don't buy it. <laughs> well, um. Uh, he would have been buying around five cents. Today hit a high of what was it? 30, 33 cents. Thirty cents. So, so. And it was five cents a week ago. Five cents a week ago. So within seven days, it went from five cents. If you bought it at five cents seven days ago, to thirty-two cents. If you put a hundred two, you know, honestly, to make really good money at that at that point, like really good money, you're gonna have to put a thousand dollars down. You could put a couple hundred and make a little bit. But if you want to see some serious gains on that, you could have put a thousand and made a lot. But on Hoage, mm-hmm. five hundred bucks, you're going to have over a million coins. Yeah. And and the thing is this: uh, these things are run by supercomputers, um, and some coins are better than others because of the flexibility. In fact, uh, when this coin first, um, I'm talking about the wrong coin. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. You clarify. No, sorry, no, clarify. I'm sorry, I'm talking about the wrong coin. But these coins are being made where you could transfer money from here to the tip of India, from here to the tip of Chile, and it would take no time. Whereas to make a, a, a wire transfer through a bank, you got to pay these fees, mm-hmm. and, and then it goes from your bank to maybe the central bank of, let's say, Banco de Chile. And then from Banco de Chile, they have to then make another transfer to the branch that's in somewhere in the tip of Chile. So, and there's fees. This is going to be pronto. It's there. As fast as in, the computer is, that's as fast as Into the go. account. Yep. This is, and we don't have to worry about the Federal Reserve Bank. This might be the whole, look. They're going to try to tell you. Like, they even see ads uh, Chase Bank says that crypto is impractical. Of course, they're going to say that. They want to. They want you to put their money. The opponent. They want you to put your money yeah. in their banks. Now you also <laughs> they, have. They're threatened. But now Wall Street. Hey, uh, an IPO came out yesterday. Was it Wednesday? Yesterday. It yeah. was yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, Wednesday. I oh. bought some of it. It's called uh, Coinbase. I bought one. I bought one share. Uh, <laughs> Just yeah. wanted to be a part of it. Yes, <laughs> I, I didn't buy too many shares. There were, t- um, the insiders got it at two hundred and fifty bucks. When it came public, it sh- uh, the insiders were trading it even before it came public. So they r- raised the price of the shares to about three hundred and forty three dollars, and when the public was able to buy it, they drove it up to four hundred bucks. Yep. But if you're sitting on a couple of million shares. And you just made $150 on these shares, you might be selling some at the top. Absolutely. So people, that's what happened. They sold. Yeah. So some people were selling at the top and it came back down to $347 a share. So I said, um, it looks like a bottom. It wasn't. Uh, I think it even went lower today to about $320. Yeah. But I bought a few shares because I know it's going to really fluctuate at the beginning. Once it finds, once I see the base, now Coinbase makes a lot of money. And, and and I think that uh, it would be a, a good investment, but too bad, you know, it's not like buying a five cent coin. Right. You know, you're gonna spend over three hundred bucks. Yeah, those. I mean, personally, me, um, I I only mess with stuff that's under a penny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't see value. I don't see upside in putting money in anything that's over and under a dollar to me, because I could put so much more in. And I yeah. can I can get a better well, better gain. I, you know, you can sit on a little bit. If longer. you are if you are looking at, uh, and I'm no so, pro. So. Okay, yeah. If you're looking at something that you understand, yeah, and you know the, the potential, right. And you don't have to put in ten twenty thousand dollars into it. You don't. Right. Some people have. Oh, by the way, today, 
someone bought three billion, uh -huh. three hundred million plus Deutsche coins. Yeah, I wonder who did that. Yeah, we. I've, I've been trying to find out who uh, was it. Oh, uh, man, uh, somebody was telling me that earlier too. They call people that have these um, uh, large amounts or anybody that owns cryptocurrencies. You call them wallets. You, you wind up putting the money like in a, a a wallet. This is like the third. This is like the third biggest wallet. So you have people that own over three billion Deutsche coins. Uh, they put the money in there because they saw something. And um, and Elon Musk, Snoop Dogg, Mark Cuban. Um, and uh, ATM machines, 1,808 ATM machines. Um, you know, we, you, you brought up a subject. I want to just, could, we, could I change this for a second? Yeah, we could do whatever we want. There's no, there's no. Uh... You know, what's been bothering me um, is that this country is saying that white people are racist. White people don't have the time to be racist. White people are struggling as much as anybody else in this country. When you read, when you pick up a newspaper and you read an article that says most Americans today don't have that $800 to repair their car and it's all done with credit cards, they're struggling. People don't, when people are struggling, they got no time to be thinking this nonsense that CNN, MSNBC, and even Fox talks about. This is nonsense. You personally, you personally, if you're not an African-American descendant, do you wake up in the morning hating blacks? Of course, of course you don't. It's re only insane people hate another group. Yeah. And do you think Americans hate Chinese? Oh, CNN's trying to make something bigger out, out oh, of that. Oh, yeah, you see that. They're, push they're pushing this. Oh. I'm like, since when? Since when? We, I, when I was a kid, we used to say they were the smartest. Yeah. Because, the, you know, the culture... Education, yeah. you know, you, you know, a lot, of, a lot of, you know, Asians were doctors, and yeah, you know, now, they, listen, beautiful people. The the guy you had here the, last night, what was his name? Who? Mark. Mark was it? Who he had? Uh, last night. The car salesman. Oh, you mean my last episode? Yeah. Ar Arthur, my boy Arthur. Arthur, young African American descendant, father's been a banker all his life, the kid. Well, how old is he now? He's my, he's my age, 40. Yeah, but they're kids. You're, you're, like, you're my kid. Yeah. Uh, 40 to me is kid. And uh, you can see that what, what all he wants in his life is to enjoy life with his wife and kids. That's it. And, and, and live comfortable. That's what everybody wants. People don't wake up in the morning saying, oh, I hate that group and I hate that group. And if you listen to CNN, MSNBC, Fox, ABC, they programming you. Yeah. It's a program. Yeah, it's it's called television. So when they show a woman kissing a woman, they're putting a picture in a young girl's mind. When they show a man kissing a man, they're putting a picture in a young boy's mind. And the young boy goes, I don't watch TV. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't watch TV because it's a propaganda machine. Yeah. Uh, one of the people in the CIA, one of the people in the CIA says, We'll know that this program works when everybody in America believes the lies. Yeah. We talk, we tell them on television. Yeah. They actually this is on this this is actually in scientific papers. Yeah, this has been going on for years. You, you got Puerto Ricans that well, we, we're Puerto Rican. So yeah. oh yes. I was born in Brooklyn. My parents are from Puerto Rico. I love the island. The island's doing good. There's a business everywhere, restaurants. It's the climate is perfect. But let me tell you something. You got Puerto Ricans that can't vote Republican. They're like, it's like a cult. Uh, and, and, and the Republican could be even more qualified. And all of a sudden, they would, CNN would say, oh, that, he's a racist. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Yeah. And then Al Sharpton <laughs> comes, brown people can't vote for him. Uh, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and the Mexicans and can't vote for him because he's a Republican. Oh, because Al said it. They can't. Oh, no, that's it. It's, we can't do it. Yeah. Hey, Al, go pay your taxes, okay? Yeah. Go go pay your taxes, Al. It, it's, can't it's, fool it's, us, It's ridiculous. Buddy. So listen. 
A lot of people are easily fooled, Dad. And then we just have to look. Easily fooled. Easily fooled. And and I, I owe it to, not I owe it to, but the reason they're easily fooled is because, first off, they're unhealthy. They, they, they surround themselves by other people who are not too intelligent. Not too intelligent. They don't open their minds and they're not looking okay. into things. And when you surround yourself with like-minded people, yeah. you're never going to change your, your mindset. You're not going to be yeah. open-minded to anything. Yeah. So once people are surrounded by intelligent people who say, hey, wait, did you ever think about it like this? Exactly. Wait, look at that. Does that look right to you? But see, if you're not questioning things, you're never gonna, you're never gonna open your mind to what it could be, what it really is, the reality of things. You gotta question it. You know, I, I took a trip to Santo Domingo, right? And uh, we took a tour. We took a tour bus. Yeah. And uh, we. Uh, Wait, where did you take a trip to? Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Dominican Republic. Okay. And then we went in into Santo Domingo. And we took a little tour bus, right? And we got off. Yeah. There was a spot that they, that's, that's where that bus stops every day. And there's a guy there. He was Haitian. Yeah. A Haitian going to Santo Domingo because the economy of Santo Domingo is better than the economy Haiti. in Haiti. Right. So I asked the dude, hey, where, where can I get a beer here? So he tells me, give me $2 and I'll take you to where you can get a beer. I said two dollars. Uh, I had no problem giving him two dollars. Right. But I said, my man, you say, you're hanging around here asking people for money, if, if if they for information. Right. I said, why don't you get a fifty drum barrel? You know that this tour bus stops here every day. Right. Get yourself a fifty gallon barrel, fill it up with ice, beers, soda, water. And the tourists, they're going to pay you a dollar, two dollars for anything that you sell there because two dollars for the tourists is change, chump change. Right. For you, it might be a lot of money. Right. But could you imagine if you sold 25, 50, 100 items, beer, yeah. soda? And you'll be making more money than the average man here. Yeah. But people don't think. Right. People don't think. People just, people come to... Oh, I'm coming to America to get a job. Shit. Why don't you come to America and think about how you could open a business? Well, but people do. Huh? Well, people do. Oh, that, Absolutely. Oh, there's, there's, so not being that you brought that up. I have a lot of friends that came from other countries, and they, they own the deli. They own the halal, soup, yeah. the halal food mart. Yeah. They own uh, the, the diner. They own, yeah. you know, people come from out of these. You know what? And they have more ambition than Americans that live here in America. No, because... Americans conform. They conform to nine to five. The, the, yeah, they think that. Oh, son, you you got parents that would tell a son, oh, you gotta get a job. Yeah, you gotta be a a police officer, a, a fireman, or a, whatever. Right. Then you have parents that say, dude, the best lawyers are gonna grow old and die. If you want to be a lawyer. You be a lawyer, okay, although that's a but that's your own business. You I know, want, lawyer. You know, you know even yeah. doctor. Even though yeah. you're working, you, you're slaving over this, but it's a great. You're helping people, and you make a ton exactly. of money. Exactly. And you can open up your own practice, and eventually have your own physicians, and you know stuff like that. Those are those are great careers, absolutely. When I was a kid back in the 1950s, there were Puerto Rican grocery stores mm -hmm. all over Brooklyn. Yeah. They didn't come here to America saying, "Oh, I'm gonna get a job." Right. I'm going to work in a factory. <laughs> no. They came over here and they said, damn. I, could, I could cook. No, no. no. <laughs> they, they said, what? One, two, three. Four. This block has 10 huge buildings with at least 40 families in each. Right. It, I don't need to sell to that block or that block. I'm going to open up a bodega here. I'm going to sell them the milk, the bread. Uh, the rice, the beans, yeah. tomato sauce, and they made a living. I remember yeah. when Goto, Goto, who who owned a a, a grocery store in the, Brooklyn, uh, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I lived in a beautiful building. Right. Not, we all don't come from the ghetto. Uh, uh, I lived in a beautiful building, and um, they had these like storefronts in the bottom, <laughs> and we had this nice double door. Yeah. There was a little foyer, like to keep the. You open up the first two doors, you keep the win, the winter out, right. and then you open up the second doors and you go in. Right. So he had a 
he had the storefront. Mm-hmm. I re- I remember when he says he showed me his bank account. The guy had like this. I'm talking about maybe 1959. Hey, look, grocery store, but he had sixty five thousand dollars. That's a lot of money at that time. You could buy you could buy houses cash back then. You could buy cars cash. The guy had a lot of money. Yeah, sixty five thousand probably a million dollars today. Uh, I don't know if that much, but it was a lot. My aunt. Well, think about it, man. My aunt. The things were twenty five cents. Uh, houses were fifteen thousand dollars. You buy a pizza and a coke for twenty five cents. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it is what it is. My uh, my aunt and her husband they came from Puerto Rico here. Mm-hmm. He opened up a barn grill. He became a landlord. My other uncle became a landlord, and then you had other people in the family that oh, I got a job. Yeah. I got a job in a factory. Mm-hmm. But anyway, money went a long way back then. Right. But uh, you just have people that look at the situation and says, how can I make a dollar with these people? Right. And they go, you did it. You you open up your gym. Uh, you have your studio. Real estate. Uh, you, you do real estate. Yeah. Natalie. You know, she works hard. Yeah. She didn't like nine to five. I never did. Uh, I, you didn't either. Uh, my dad was like, man, get a job, son. Save your money. But 24 years old, I opened up my first gym, and I took a gamble. I learned how to be an entrepreneur at a young age. Went through some ups and downs, but, you know, later in life, I got it. I understand it. Hell yeah. Now, you got people like... like and I think that this is my thing with life, right? In life, the most valuable thing is freedom. Freedom oh. is life, right? Freedom, to me, is being rich. If you have freedom to make a decision every day to do what you want to do, you're rich. You don't have to yeah. be rich in the bank account. Yeah. Well, you're. I mean, I mean, I love entrepreneurship. I, I really do. I, my my dad calls me every day on on Facetime. I'm doing my favorite thing. I'm napping. <laughs> you're rich if you have freedom, and that's important. So I suggest anybody out there look, try to find a trade, and become an entrepreneur. Get good at something. Open up your own business. Hire your own employees. That's Living, guys, you know, that's living. And that's the future. There's a lot. Digital age, technology, internet. I mean, there's so many opportunities out there. Don't limit yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Life is short. Yeah. Live it free. Absolutely. That's my advice. I remember when you was telling me you was going to open up the gym. And in my mind. Oh, man, wait, son. Don't, no, don't do that. Don't do that, son. <laughs> I never said that. I'm like, all right. I never said all right, that. Dad, that's the vote of confidence I was looking for, Dad. <laughs> You know, well, I, I don't listen to nobody anyway. No, no. I didn't say that to you. <laughs> oh, you did? No, I did. No, you did at first. That was your initial reaction. Uh, and then a couple of days later, you called me up with your blessing. You know, son, I thought about this. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, the same thing with Ned. I, I told Ned, Ned, look, you can get it. You're a young girl. You can get a job at the bank. And, you know, back in my day, if you work for a big company, you know, Chemical Bank, Chase Manhattan Bank, They'll pay for your college. Yeah, you know, and and and, um, and if you're in banking and you took business courses, it's like you didn't have to go to four years. I, I know you these are great to, opportunities yeah. too. So, but she came back to me. I think after working like thirty days, yeah. I said I can't work. Yeah, no. In the same place all day all long. Day long, no way. I was and the same way. Some people I've always been yeah. like that. And uh, I stuck it out a lot of times at different companies because it made good money, but I knew it was a stepping stone to yeah. eventually having my own. No, you, you've done well, and uh, my daughter's done well, and uh, I'm happy. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's another thing, man. La- uh, you're going to have the best times of your life when you spend and enjoy yourself with family because that's the best time. I, I enjoy myself being with my kids, my grandkids. And uh, other members of the family. And, of course, I, I do have um, good friends that I enjoy. Um, that's it. So um, I'm going to um, – we're coming to an end soon, right? Yeah, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it we're up. We're going to wrap it up. Listen, I'm going to wrap it up with this. I'm not wrapping it up with George Coin. I'm not going to wrap it up with, um, uh, you know, the mumbling, stumbling president. I'm going to wrap it up oh, with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. oh. He wears a mask all the time. You you would think that the White House is sanitized, right? 
You would think that they check everybody that goes into the White House to make sure that they don't have a fever, a cold, a cough, <laughs> and and that they don't have COVID. They could give them it's, that 15-minute uh, test. It's a stage, man. It's a stage. It's a Damn, stage. They, they, man, I got people that's, I know people that are paranoid. Paranoid. Paralyzed. Pa- paralyzed. Paralyzed. You're, you're, um. No, don't go there. <laughs> you're what? You're what? No, I was going to say, but I'm going to take it back because, um. He might be watching. Yeah, day, exactly. absolutely. And his parents will be there. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, a, a young friend of ours couldn't come to the gym. I'm not mentioning on that. Oh no, there's a few people that yeah. couldn't come. So they it could be anybody. They couldn't come to the gym because their parents were telling him, "No, no." It's, you know what he says? He says, "My parents were paranoid, but he's a good young man." Nice young man. There's a few kids that happen too, yeah. so it could be anybody. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few. That uh, you know. But I res- yeah, no, listen. I, I, listen, few, like five. You know. Yeah, I re- listen. I respect anybody's way or choices in life, so I don't knock anybody for feeling a certain way. But I do know, in my heart of hearts, that it's not what it seems. Yeah, far from it. Now, I'm afraid of other things. You know, when you see these big antennas, you're driving and you see these big antennas, if you get yourself a, one of those meters that reads the, 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 the radiation the radiation coming from them, yeah. you would be afraid to even drive by those antennas. Right. Now, what I'm afraid of, uh, what I'm afraid of is, uh, this might sound like conspiracy nonsense. Hey, man, nothing's a conspiracy but, thing. Because you yeah. know what? A year ago, when we were, people were saying, oh, they're going to try to put a chip in you, Oh, that your conspiracy guy. And what, what was on the New York Post yesterday yeah. on the front cover? The Pentagon has created a microchip to detect COVID under your skin. Is that yes. a conspiracy? It's not a conspiracy anymore. No. They're telling you straight up in your face. No. And, 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 and Leon Musk. Elon. Elon. He's talking about putting a chip in your brain. Yeah. Now, they put a chip on a monkey's brain. And the monkey was able to play Pong. You remember that game? The other yeah. Chip? Yeah. So they had they had his hand on a, on a remote control. Yeah. He thought that he was controlling the game with the, this, but the controller wasn't even plugged in. He was, it was his mind. He was controlling the game with his mind. Yeah. Now some people are gonna jump on this as, oh my God, they could give me a chip with I'll know every word in the dictionary. Uh, they're gonna give me a chip. I'm gonna know every event in history. That's evil. If, 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 listen, if you read if they if they give you the true history, if they give you nonsense. You're going to be an expert in history that's all Bro. twisted, yeah. all twisted. It's all been twisted. Yeah. So so we're going to wrap it up. But the one thing that I wanted to get to that we didn't, we didn't get to is that America is not a racist country. No way. People have likes and dislikes. Uh, people, um, uh, the biggest difference between people sometimes might be the intellect because um, I love everybody. But sometimes I know when I'm talking to somebody that doesn't a damn thing about American history, I, I, I'm talking to somebody that doesn't know nothing about financing or investing. And I say, in fact, they know very little of anything. <laughs> All they know is what they see on CNN right. and MSNBC and ABC. Yeah. You know, like they've never picked a book in their life. Right. This country's not a racist country. No. The, the American people love their... They are New York Jets, the New York Knickerbockers, the Brooklyn Nets, oh, and, yeah. and and when you look at these teams, I'm not a Net fan. I'm a Nick fan. He's, he's a Nick. And when you look at these teams, this is like 80 percent black. And you know something? And that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. I'm not mad. I watch them every day. I love them. I know. I don't care who's playing on the court, and I don't think any the fans come. They pack out the stadiums. White people. Spanish people, black people together in stadiums proving that we could all get along. Hell yeah. That's just one example. You got, I don't think I talked about this one time to you. Oh. I said, they push this racism thing that we're so divided, but how does hundreds of stadiums across America come together every week, almost every day, to support their team, different colors? They drink together, they leave, they cheer together, they go home, you don't hear no problems. Standing ovations together. Everything's beautiful. Yeah. But no, that we have a divide in our country because oh. the news tells you there is. Oh, Don Listen, Lemon and the other guy. Oh, that- Don freaking Lemon. That guy, honestly, is the biggest stooge ever. Ever. All those guys. I mean, they're all they're all losers. And the other guy. Oh. The other guy. Uh, 
<laughs> I can't believe that America voted for a racist. Oh my God! Oh, I, who's that guy? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even bother to know his name because I, I looked at it idiot time. No more. I oh by the way, I haven't watched CNN. You said that. No, I haven't watched it in about six months before the elections b back in uh, two sixteen. I stopped watching CNN. I stopped watching Cause MS, it, MSNBC. Because you, you realize it was just a script. Bullshit. It's all scripted. It's, uh, it's just like, all right, today's this way you're gonna this feed. A, this way you're gonna feed the public. Uh, I used to wake up in the morning and listen to. Uh, uh, it was on, I think, MSNBC. Uh, because, uh, and now when I look at these people, I said this is a joke. Yeah. You this know. Is like, these people are talking to me, bullshit. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so I have Fox. Them too. Uh, they, 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 they play both sides of the fence. Yeah. They're like, oh, let's let's drag these people in. Yeah. Oh no, let's drag those people back in. It's but a the, joke. The, the majority owner of Fox is a globalist. Yeah. He hated Donald Trump. He hated Donald Trump. And listen, me myself, I don't believe in no presidents. I'm gonna be completely. I don't believe in Donald. I don't. He pushed the vaccine. I think he did it because he wanted to appease people. But look, uh, and he shut. If and you're he, if you're a true president and you don't believe in something, you keep it real. Yeah. Don't, uh, you don't candy coat nothing, and you don't do nothing. You don't bend over nobody. But listen, he lost all credibility with me when when he comes out with. If you do any study on YouTube, if you talk to any doctors that are uh, are in the front line of uh, medicine, and there's quite a few of them on the YouTube. You just got to find them. But they push in these videos more and more. But what are you talking about? Well, when Donald Trump came out with Fauci. Oh, God. I mean, who doesn't know that Fauci is a, a criminal? A, 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 he's, a, he's, a, he's a criminal. He's a POS. You guys just got to look at your history in the 80s and the 70s with Fauci. A lot of things that he was involved with today he'll deny, but it's all written. It's in yeah. history. All bad things. So Even YouTube. You know, five, before Trump became president. Yeah. Um, on YouTube, you will find all the dirt on the Clintons. All the dirt on the Clintons. Oh, my God. Now you got to search. You got to go. Oh, you, they hide the stuff. Uh, now. Exactly. I was actually looking for something that I found back back in January about that Wuhan, Wuhan lab. Yeah. And there was, um, you know, you typed in Wuhan lab, yeah. who, who supports it, who backs it, who funds it. Yeah. It was quick to find, right? Yeah. And I, Gates Foundation, George Soros, yeah. just so many people yeah. backing. Yeah. This lab that creates viruses, right? Right. Exactly. So now I go to look for it just to, you know, get some facts and print it out just to hold it. You can't find it. No, you type that in, and all it has is fact check, fact check, fact yeah. check. Oh, yeah. That's all that comes up now. Yeah. So there's a lot of lot of history that's being hidden oh, because absolutely. people are being enlightened to the bullshit. So now they don't want people to because you're getting enlightened all of a yeah. sudden. Let me do research now. All they all the new people that are enlightened they can't find the information to back no, up. They're not getting to back up their new sense of oh. Awakeness. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Uh, it's sad. Hillary Clinton <laughs> Hillary Clinton said said it best. What'd she say? We're losing the information war. Yeah. And she realized that facts yeah. cannot be easily accessed mm -hmm. by the public because the public will once the once the public knows the facts, mm -hmm. they reject the bullshit. Yeah. So now you can't find nothing on Hillary Clinton. You can't find on her friends that are all pedophiles. Yep. You, 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 you have Clinton still sponsoring woman affairs when he's a convicted rapist. Yeah. He settled out of the court. Oh, my God. Yeah, he paid a woman. He paid her $800,000. Right. He, he, so, but, no, but, 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 the, but they allow him, him, Obama, and Bush to do an infomercial about a, a vaccine. Take your vaccine today, and it, but it's it's Run. Clinton. It's Clinton. How, who's gonna listen to this guy, Clinton, telling you how did how did they have nerve? Yeah, putting him on a, a infomercial. I'm he not, does not belong in the public so, eye. So they have, who has respect for this guy? Who has respect for a guy that started a war twenty years ago? And they say that the eighteen uh, uh, terrorists. Yeah. That flew the planes into plane was Saudis, right? But he starts a war with Iraq, right? That's, uh, right. Oh, what about oh, they 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 put Osama in the ocean. <laughs> <What> <laughs> the 
to fairy tales. Oh, Omara, we can You buy that? We care so much about his culture that we they said that you have to drop him in the What the fuck? God. God, I'm glad you enlightened me. I'm glad I'm woke. And not woke in the sense that you guys know today, but I'm I'm enlightened yeah. to reality and what's real and I want you guys to be the same way. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just a realist. Common sense. Common sense. Common sense. L- lacking a- highly in yeah. this world. Well, I just listen. I'm a God fearing man. I pray every day, and um, I know that. Uh, I'm. I am too, and I'm a serious man. But this is a. a this is a. A, a podcast. A, we're just yeah. expressing ourselves, yeah. and it's okay. You know, it doesn't mean that we're not God fearing. Oh no. I pray every day, and I, I just know that I'm glad that I know I fear a higher power. I don't fear a human power. There is a. A human power could lead to, you know, uh, devastation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have to say this too. Say it. I hear people sometimes saying, "God bless America." What they should be saying, "God, forgive America." This is a country, and I love the American people, and I and I and I I think the greatest political document ever put together was the. Uh, you know, the Constitution of the United States of America. Yeah. Uh, when they put down in the Second Amendment that you should bear arms, it wasn't to protect yourself or to go hunting. It was protect yourself from George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. If, if, if all of a sudden, after having power, they decide that they're going to act like kings. Yeah. But they knew it. And this is why I think every American should be arming themselves. Absolutely. And not just to... Uh, not just to... Uh, fight in a repulse criminals and things like that. But what happens, Americans are so used to electricity. They're used to uh, electricity. Yeah. If the grid goes down, you're not going to get gas because the, uh, the the gas stations need the electricity uh, to, to pump, run the pumps pump and all the that. Pumps, yeah. You're not going to get nothing. Yeah. So you need a gun. And then, um, let me. I also, you know, you have to have Foods that last a long time in your house. You should always st- uh, stock them up. But what's going to protect you from somebody coming to take that? You need a weapon. You need a weapon. And I don't, I'm not a... And a, and a shotgun, a pump action, that's not going to help you with 30 people trying to attack you and invade your no, home right. for your food because there's no grid and there's no supermarkets. So when they say, oh, why do you need an assault rifle? For those reasons. Yeah. So they're trying to take our weapons away. Why? Some of us know. Some of us don't want to don't want to yeah. see that possibility. Yeah. But there's oh, there's limitless possibilities in our society. Yeah. Absolutely. I I live in an area where I could go fishing at the river, and at the ocean. I'm conscious of this. Uh, I'm not going to be listening to CNN saying, "Oh, if uh, bring your family into the city, we got uh, welfare cheese and uh, oatmeal for you." No. I ain't going to no city. Oh, I ain't going to no concentration camp. I'm not going into no stadium. I'm not going to nowhere where I can't be with my weapon. And and like I said, if you live near the water, be kind. Get yourself a you know Man. a fishing rod. Listen, you can eat squirrels. <laughs> Serious. No, Down south, they eat squirrels. No, absolutely. They, you got to think. In China, they eat, eat everything. They, they, <laughs> There's they, nothing that's not on the menu. Soon to be on you. Anyway, <laughs> so listen, I'm. Um, we're gonna cut this out. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. We'll wrap it up now. We're gonna Paul. wrap it up because uh, th- this is this is a a normal chat between me and my son. Yeah. Uh, actually, a normal chat between me and my daughter and my family. Uh, we talk about everything: politics, religion. But America, we're not a racist nation. No. We listen to a lot of racism on television, yeah. but it's there. We, we ain't got no time to be racist. We all got to make a living, and we, all, and we all should be just enjoying life. And so God bless. Uh, if you lasted this long, I'll give you a second Hell God bless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, thanks for tuning into the show. Stay tuned for more, and I'll be having my pops back on. And we're going to talk more junk. We'll have more guests with my pops as well. And, you know, more other guests. If you want to be a a guest on my show, you got something to say, give me a shout. Leave a comment. Inbox me. Have a great night. God bless.